Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over the solution to the longest palindrome problem. Um, the longest palindromic substring within a string is the problem definition. You've probably seen this problem before. Um, and so we're going to go over the recursive solution to this so that you can understand how to transform this into the iterative solution for this by looking at um, the inputs and outputs that the recursive calls make. And that's usually how you're going to actually uh, solve this problem. Okay, so um, let's look at this code run. So the way that we've defined this is we have our longest palindrome kind of driver function that you pass in the string to, and the string's called s. And then we have our, our function that will recurse over the string to find all of the uh, permutations of the palindrome or the possible palindromes that we can find. And it's called f. When we call f for of s for the first time, we're going to actually pass in the length of s minus 1, so the last addressable element in the string. And we're also going to pass in length of 1. What this will return to us is the length of our palindrome uh, and a start index. Now, what happens when we recurse through it, though, uh, is that we're actually passing in a start index and uh, the length. So we're passing it in like this, start length. Okay, so um, let's look at this. Basically, uh, so we'll call it on A, B, C, B, D. O T T T or O O T T T O O O or sorry, O O there. Um, so this second palindrome is the largest palindrome that is in the string, but there's another palindrome B C B. So we can kind of see the the way that this gets called. Okay, so um, so we'll call our function for the first time. We define the function, uh, and then we call it. We call f on the length of s minus one, right? And we'll, we'll start with uh, all the things of length one. Now, the way that this works is first we have our base cases. So we open up a whole, uh, another stack frame for a smaller or for a different starting position, but still of length one. And we'll do this for every element in the string, basically. Um, let's see, three. There we go. Okay, so um, what you can see here is that we've opened up a stack frame for every starting position in the string. And what we're going to do is build out from every starting position in the string. We're going to check to see um, symmetrical uh, palindromes, as in uh, it's palindromes that are even length, so the middle letter is not uh, present, so like AA. Um, uh, and then we're also going to check for odd odd length palindromes that are um, that are like B C B, uh, where there's a middle letter and then the um, the outer letters are what are symmetrical. So um, we've opened up every single stack frame, and so now we're actually going to start processing things. So once our length is less than two and our starts greater than zero. Um, and so this, uh, this happened with this, our length is less than two, um, and our start is, uh, uh, or is not greater than zero. So the first time that's happened, um, we set this length one variable to negative one, negative one. Um, we're going to check a bunch of other things with recursive function calls. So we're going to kind of branch out from each uh, possible starting position. So you can kind of see these as like the first level of, of nodes in the tree of function calls, right? Each one of these starting positions we're going to explore out. Um, and so uh, then at the end, what we're going to do is return the largest um, start and length position. So uh, start being, or uh, the length comes first out and then the starting position comes second. So um, the length is our uh, greatest digit or our um, highest value digit. And so the longer the palindrome, the larger uh, the tuple will be that gets returned. And so then we'll use this max function, which will compare both elements in the tuple as though it's a two digit, 
two digit number and it'll return the largest one. So um, the next thing that we do is we compare, um, you know, if length is less than two and start is greater than zero. So we're sort of filtering out um, the base case here. And once we filter that out, what we really start doing is comparing, uh, and this is sort of the two pointer method of comparing palindromes where you kind of look at the center and then you expand out like this. Um, so here it's start minus one, right? And so if start is the zeroth element uh, and minus one uh, is the same as start, that's, that's kind of checking to see if the first and last element are the same. Um, but we don't make, we don't pass this check, not because of the second thing, but because of this first thing, our length is less than two, um, and our start is not greater than zero. So, uh, we set our length to variable to be none. So we reach the end of that particular tree. Um, and then we're going to check to see if our start is greater than zero and the start plus the length are less than the length of the string. So this is uh, protecting us against going past the length of the string. So we're not checking, um, you know, on, on position uh, 10, length 5, because that would be an out-of-bounds error. So we protect ourselves from any out-of-bounds errors here. And then we check to see if start minus one, and that's why we had that, you know, start's got to be greater than zero so that we can start minus one. Uh, if start minus one is the same as start plus length. So when our length is um, longer than one, it's two corners of a substring. And so the start and the end character have to be the same in order for it to be a palindrome, right? And when our, when we verified that a that a two character palindrome is valid, then we kind of march outward and we validate that that is also valid. Since we already validated this first one, we don't have to validate it again. We can just validate the next largest out. So it's this kind of idea of start finding all the centers that could possibly be and then expanding out from them. So um, if that's true, which in this first one it isn't, uh, you know, uh, then we move on and we uh, grow. But since it isn't, we're, we're not going to grow. So all of our uh, checks so far have come back um, negative ones, which means uh, the largest uh, element is length 1 start 0. And so all of our original... Um, all of our individual characters, our centers, are palindromes because one character technically is a palindrome, but um, we kind of don't care a lot about those. Uh, and so if we never found any palindrome in this, we would want to return basically the first character. Uh, so right now we're looking at the max and comparing all of those, and uh, what we'll return is this one. It's the largest number. It's 10, essentially. So um, having come out of that call for um, start of length, uh, start of zero at length one, uh, let me just make sure that that was what it was. Having come out of the call at start of zero and length one, um, we're now in the start at one of length one. So now we're going to try the first character and we're going to compare it to the character right next to it. And then we're going to expand outward if that's the case, uh, if that works. But in this one, that character is B here. So um, we'll, next thing that we'll do is uh, we'll check to see if B and C are the same. And we do that here. Uh, they're not, so we'll return negative 1, negative 1 into that length 2 variable. And then we're also going to check to see if, if B is the middle, are A and C the same? And they're not, so we're going to return negative 1, negative 1. So we'll return that length start, 1, 1, um, and that's the largest one, so we'll return 1, 1 out of that call. So now um, we've gotten rid of start position 0 and start position 1 as valid places to find the largest palindrome. Um, so we'll do the same thing here, uh, and it looks like, uh, wait, go back. 
um, it looks like uh, since our start is two and our length is one, um, starts greater than zero, uh, this, you know, we're not outside the bounds of the string. And so now we can say um, if uh, two, that's C, uh, if two minus one, so that's B now, is the same as start plus length. So start is two, so we're starting here, plus the probable length, so that's this character. So now we're comparing B and B, and those are the same. So we're going to recurse down again, right? So now we're about to call uh, F again with uh, basically we're going to say, okay, well, start position is here now, um, minus one, and then length is, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, start is, yeah, there now, and then uh, length is actually going to be plus two. So we're kind of... Um, going out by one on each side. So um, now we check that. Uh, that's our base case. So we're not at our base thing. And so we're sort of ignoring that. And now uh, there's that. And so uh, our current slice, 3, 1, is the largest. And we only opened this function call up because we knew that this this function call was a palindrome um, that that happened here because we validated it before right when when we were looking at uh, start at two and length one we validated that actually start of uh, three is um, sorry uh, that start of three is, and length one or yeah sorry length three and start of one are a uh, valid palindrome. So uh, let's look at this. Oh, geez. There it is. Okay. So now we'll return the max of that and that's three, one. So we return the current slice by default because we know that by opening up that stack frame, uh, we found a palindrome. And then if we don't actually successfully open up any other stack frame, so if any of these if statements go through, we'll open up another stack frame. But if we don't, we'll basically just return this current slice and because uh, we know that this current slice is a valid palindrome. So we return that and that's 3, 1. And so now um, we're, we're back in the 2, 1 uh, uh, function call. But 3, 1 is bigger than 2, 1. So length 3 uh, at starting place 1 is larger and so it'll win in this um, max uh, function. So that's kind of how this works, right? And we can see that this, um, it gets called a bunch of different times to kind of validate each one of these centers, right? Yeah, with the largest thing escaping uh, the function call each time. So after the max gets called, we're left with three, one. So now we're going to compare the starting point of four with length one um, and see if we can expand from there. Um, and so we don't, but then we'll start to get to the point where, uh, yeah, current slice. Um, let's see, we're at three, one, and now we're at start of five. And if we look, um, this big second uh, thing starts at, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And so this one, uh, five of length one, should open up more palindrome uh, or more function calls. So here's where it will happen. Um, let's see. Uh, we know that the current slice is one. Um, so this is uh, length one starting place five. And so um, here's where we'll actually uh, start looking at properly this uh, 5, 2, right? So um, we looked at 1. We compared, like, palindromes of length 1. Um, but in 6, where we check on start minus 1, that's position 5, and start, 
um, basically we check we we check at six and we say if the if the letter right before us is the same as us then there might be a palindrome going that direction so um, we open up this function call here and uh, then now we're in this function call and so length two doesn't uh, give us anything but um, here it does so start minus one and starts at five and length is two uh, is equal to start plus length and that's not valid um, so let's see uh, this one yeah the current slice is two and five and that's still smaller than three one so um, essentially we won't really get to the point where we're exploring uh, until we get to this center T, right? Because the other two T's are the same. So uh, let's see, that's going to be in, let's see, if this was five, six, seven, eight. So it's going to be eight. So I'll just go through here. It looks like two seven is kind of valid but not as big as 3, 1. Um, so then, uh, let's see, we're in the thing where it starts at 3. And so now we have one um, basically where we've opened up. Ah, I miss where it opened things up. Hold on. Kind of go back here. This is a long one, so bear with me. Um, okay, so if the start, uh, which we're seeing is 7, uh, so now we're, we're checking to see start minus 1, that's 6. And I think we start seeing, um, let's see, uh, we open up another one because, yeah, it's start minus 1 uh, and length plus 2. And so then length goes up to 5. And then we're going to check sort of the ends there. And they're, uh, I don't believe they are the same. Let's see. Start five, length seven. Um, and so, yeah, let's see. Start seven, start six, start five. So we kind of move more towards the center there. And then um, at some point, uh, we stop expanding and we return this current slice. And the current slice is seven, five, so it's much larger than three, one. Um, and so if we look at seven, that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so this is the seventh element. And so uh, palindrome of length five, uh, seven, one, two, oh, let's see, uh, yeah, so we'll just check this out, um, so if the start is five, oh, sorry, the start is five here, so this is five, and then it's length seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, so it found that essentially here, uh, I just want to get to the point where I, I can show you where it was found. This one's a little tough to wrap your brain around without that. Okay, so yeah, we had to get into the function call for 8. Um, we returned 1, 7. Uh, so that's uh, starting point 1, uh, or no, length 1, starting point 7. Um, so that's still not big enough. And so then we have to collapse up to 8, which then allows us to check 7 as our starting point. And uh, then what happens is our starting point goes down because we start moving the center over or the start point over um, and checking basically um, we move the start point over and then we say, okay, well, then the length goes over not 1 but 2. So that we're kind of going out the same number like that, right? So uh, then the current slice uh, is 2, 7, and that uh, can escape all those negative ones. And so then it will keep 
kind of interrogating this, right? It'll say, okay, well then let's expand it one more. Uh, so here we're calling it expanded current slice. Start minus one, so it starts at eight. Length plus two, so then start seven, and we're gonna check a palindrome of length three. And then we'll do that even larger. Um, we'll be able to expand again once we hit the uh, expansion clause, and that was on this step here. Um, and then, so we uh, move the start back one and we extend the length two. And once we find that those are the same, uh, then we'll check start at five um, and then length of seven. And then once we find that that's valid, we will, sorry, we'll evaluate that against, you know, all those negative ones, and then it will pop out of that function call. So now uh, six, five, what got passed in is not what's getting returned. It's length seven, uh, start position five. So then that is never as large as um, the, the current uh, current slice, right? So here where current slice got set, um, that's where we got that value, right? So we had seven, five, and then we added five, six as the uh, current slice. And then there's current expand or expanded current slice. This is winning. So then um, we keep going through, we check all of those, uh, the largest one, seven, five. And so then um, we pop out of uh, this function call, we go one forward and you see how line 18 was the last one to have run this one. That's where we expanded out. And then, so now we create our current slice, which was our, the values that were passed in. And if the values that returned from expanded current slice are larger than the values that were passed in, as in we didn't return negative one, negative one, um, then uh, we keep that larger size thing. So then we pop out and eight one um, is our current slice, right? Or sorry, one eight is our current slice, which isn't as big as 75. Um, and so then that gets compared and that all collapses out. And, and so we still have to go through 10 and 11. Um, we still have to compare them. Uh, and so they produce a lot of negative ones uh, and their current slice. And then that leaves um, one nine is the largest one there. And then as you can see, um, 10, two or two, 10, uh, it's not, you know, real numbers. It's not like 210, it's two and 10. So it compares seven and two and five and 10 in there. Um, so then, uh, that then now we're just comparing seven, five and two, and 10, uh, and then so seven, five is our largest candidate. And so we return seven, five, which is the largest parameter. So I'll include this uh, with the video so that you can walk through it yourself. Um, and then um, later on, I'll reveal how uh, a dynamic program can be, a dynamic programming solution can come of this. The best way to really um, evaluate this though, is if you look at this um, table, I made a table and so first we, uh, we have a, well, I'll just use like a check mark here. Um, first we have all of our starts and then we have all of our lengths, right? So this one is a palindrome. This one's a palindrome or no, sorry. Uh, all of our length ones are palindromes, right? But they're not our largest palindrome. We want the largest one. Um, and then we find, okay, um, starting position two, like zero, no, uh, one, no, the two of length two, that's not the case, but two of length three is the case, right? So, uh, we found a bunch of palindromes that are kind of like that. 
Now, if you look at some of the other function calls from before, essentially um, we found this one that's uh, uh, length two at position 10. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's length two, so that OO, right? So if you can, while you're running this, um, just kind of cape a table like this. So at position 10, uh, length two, uh, we have bound one, right? And um, you'll note that uh, once we found uh, position, I'll go back to when we found that position first. Let's see, we were in eight. Uh, we got down to five, seven. Yeah, there we go. So uh, we found one here, right? Uh, we found three, one and two, seven. So three length three at position one and uh, two uh, length two at position seven. Um, and then what we did is we looked again, start length, start seven, length three. Um, and we, we know that that's a palindrome because we, we got to it from, uh, our expand our, this if statement, if start, you know, uh, if start negative one is the same as start plus, plus length, right? So, um, start seven length three is one so every time we open one up start seven length three um we know that there's another palindrome so we kind of keep track right and then uh start six length five we know that's a palindrome um so we can mark that um, sorry, not length, yeah, yeah, uh, start six, length, uh, what was it, start six, length five, right, and then we keep going, we have, uh, start five, length seven, so we found one, start five, length seven. And we've we've validated that all these functions are, um, or that all these parameters uh, don't result in a, uh, in a call, right? Uh, and so they don't result in the palindrome. And so we return that, and that's when we start collapsing again. Um, now we're at six five, and now we're at seven three, and now we're at eight one. So we compare all of those, and uh, we end up with uh, the length is seven, and the start index is five. So um, basically, this uh, solution doesn't call over and over and over again to revalidate that um, these are happening. But in the other example, they did, right? In the other example, we had to kind of um, unroll all the way to the bottom and then go back up and then unroll again, right? Like there were a lot of redundant calls, but in this one, there are fewer redundant calls. And so um, when I post the dynamic programming solution, um, you'll note that when you run it through Python Tutor, it actually takes more because it has to explore this entire grid. So Dynamic programming really only saves you if you're going to have to explore this grid more than once. So if it's O of 2n, right, um, that's fine. Uh, but if it's not going to be O of 2n, like that, that was far less um, operations than O of 2n uh, or O of n squared uh, or anything like that. Um, so it, uh, it doesn't... It doesn't always pay to use dynamic programming. Sometimes the space cost is more and you're not really saving time. Um, and so when you figure out the dynamic programming solution to this one, you'll note that it takes more steps to actually calculate the answer than this recursive call does.
¿sí? 